I'm recording on my end as a backup here. Okay. So I will start with the uh, introduction you gave me. Okay. And then we'll just uh, go right into it. So Sounds good, man. Uh, greetings and salutations, everybody. This is Dave Duford at Final Expense Agent Mentor at feagentmentor.com, where I help agents like you succeed in the insurance business. And today, I have the pleasure of having a fantastic and wonderful sales trainer on the call with me. His name is Claude Diamond. He is the author and creator of The Gut Sales Method. He has students across the world in 18 different countries. And in case you've never heard of GUTS, GUTS stands for Great Unorthodox Untraditional Techniques of Sales and Success, where he advocates no scripts, no presentations, and definitely no begging. And it's just a three simple step process in the GUTS program. And some uh, quotes that Claude is well known for, of which I personally in, uh, love and endear. The first of it being, the salesman always comes first. Absolutely. I did a podcast, in fact, today on that very subject. Yeah, and it's something that, of course, as maybe we'll talk to or in a little bit more in depth. Um, naturally, the prospect's important, but a lot of people forget, a lot of salespeople forget that they're important too, and we got to make sure that's, that's said. Well, Secondly, why, are we in, why, are we yeah. in, why are we in business, David? To make sales, to have right. a good life, to, to realize our, you know, what we want to achieve in our personal lives. That's the whole reason we're doing this. I'm in business to make money. I'm in business to make money today. That's my goal. Right. And, and right. I do. And I do believe the salesman does come first. Right. I, 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 I'm the only one who says it because most sales trainers, no, all sales trainers, and they still say that wonderful Zig Ziglar and, St and Tommy Hopkins thing. Hey, give the prospect everything they need and then they'll reward you and give it back to you. Well, I did that. And guess what happened? You give a lot of yourself away with nothing really to ever to show for it. <laughs> yeah, and I found we were we were free consultants. Most sales guys, um, you know, we were free consultants. We were given all this great information. We were staying up late doing contracts, all this stuff. And then the prospect said, "I gave it to somebody else," or "I changed my mind," or uh, the right. famous uh, "Let me, I'll think about it," or "Talk to my lovely spouse." Right. Um, right. I, as you do to your nine, 10 children, or you got one or four, right? A three, one on the way, right? One on the way as of yeah, today. Right. It's coming. Okay. <laughs> other, other quotes uh, Claude is known for. Um, Claude, do you have the poster behind you? I can't see on the camera here. About that, is my, that is my new book uh, that's coming out. Okay. Uh, I keep promising when it's going to come out. I think it'll be out, it'll be out in, uh, um, in uh, January 2018. The Rules okay. of the Gut Sales Method. Um, I'm working on it right here. Never make time commitments on books. These are all the different rules that I've written for the Gut Sales Method. Right, right. I really believe in the freedom, the liberty. I've written the Civil Rights Sales Act for salespeople, okay? <laughs> Free at last, free at last. We have, sales is too hard for too many people. Why do you think that is, Claude? Because, well, you're personally speaking, and this is kind of funny coming from a sales trainer and an author, uh, I'm the former world's worst sales trainer. Uh, first, for world's worst salesman. Right. Now I'm a pretty good sales trainer, I think, but I was the world's worst salesman. So I really understand the trauma that these guys go through. I mean, I'd go out in sales calls and it was embarrassing, humiliating. People weren't nice to me. They didn't like me. They made judgments on me before I stepped into the room. Right. They had appointments with me where I drive two hours through traffic. And then I'd sit in the waiting room another two hours after the meeting time. And then they'd say, Claude, we have to reschedule. And I was just treated like some third world citizen. I think we know all know how that feels and it's definitely not good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and I didn't like sales at all. I, I mean, and cold calling. I, I think anybody who says, oh, I love cold calling. You hear these gurus say this all the time. I hate cold calling. I didn't like it at all. Calling up strangers. My mother, what did your mom say to you when you were a little boy going outside to play? Do not talk to strangers, Dave. That's what Amen, brother. And you know what? We grow up in the big, bad world. We get married. We have kids. We have mortgages. And you know what? You better talk to a damn lot of strangers. That's right. That's right. Absolutely. That's how it is. Yeah. So how did you how did you overcome this? Like you get into this, you recognize now that you weren't that good to start, but somehow you overcame it. Kind of describe that process. I did one. I did a lot of things in life. I always followed the rules. Mom and dad 
Um, I, had a, I had one big advantage. I'm the, I'm the child of, an immig of immigrant parents. Immigrant parents are much tougher than American parents, oh, yeah. especially your German and Dutch European parents. Yep. And I follow all the rules. I got a good job. Um, I got a good education. I have a degree in business. I have a degree. I have a doctorate in law. Um, you know, I even have a bar back there somewhere on the wall is my bartending degree. I wanted to learn how to make a good martini. I followed all the rules and I found out I didn't like the, the job I was in was okay. They were nice people and everything, but it, um, I, I wasn't happy doing what I was doing, getting all that rejection all day. I, I kind of got this thing called real estate fever. Right. I've heard of this. Um, yes. Yes. It's, and, um, and I, and I started going to seminars and reading books about that and everything. And, and that was, it's a very sales oriented business, just like your insurance business is. Right. And this, it's all the same. Sales is sales. It's persuasion. It's influence. And I wasn't very good at it, frankly. And to make a long story short, I found a mentor. And if this is, maybe this is a takeaway moment for your listeners. My, uh, my mentor, I've written books about him. Uh, the mentor teaches guts. The mentor teaches success. These are business novels I've written. Right. right. Um, and his name was Max. Max was the greatest salesman I ever met. He was a one percenter. He could pick up the phone and make more money in one phone call than I could make in a whole year at the J-O-B. Right. I've never seen anyone pick, just get into a conversation and be relaxed, be comfortable, not be subservient. And people loved him. He had this gift of almost like he was a mind reader. We call it empathy. What are they feeling? What are they thinking? Sure. He, and he was my teacher. And if, if it's anything I want to uh, uh, people to take away, find that person who's the top salesperson in your profession, insurance, real estate, whatever. Find that time, uh, uh, top person. Find out what are, they, what are they doing different than the other 99% to get them in that higher income bracket. And, and study them, tail them, shadow them if they'll allow you, pay them. Right. And that's the million, this is a big moment, David. This is the million dollar skill. This is the stuff they don't teach at Harvard Business. They don't teach sales at Wharton Business School, Harvard right. Business. They don't teach sales. And I'll tell your audience right now, sales is the million dollar skill. It doesn't matter how smart you are, how well you studied, how much money you spend on marketing and leads. If you cannot persuade and influence a person to say, man, you've, I like you, I trust you, you have something of value. You, if you can't do that, you're just knocking on doors all day long, hoping for a, what do they call them, a lay down sale. Right. And it, it's gotta be more than that. You gotta have a certain amount of control. And in Guts, what we teach, what I, what I learned from my mentor, Max, is he couldn't explain it because he was an intuitive, natural salesman. Right, yeah. Me, I was a big dummy. I had to learn this stuff, <laughs> but I could, but I was hungry. And I wanted to learn it. And once I learned how to sell in my real estate business, what I found is that in six months, I was out of debt. I was in very heavy in debt. And, and in one year, I left my job and I was making, oh my God, seven, eight times what the company was paying me, all because of sales. And I've been studying sales. I've been studying psychology for years and years. And it's the one thing they don't teach at any of the seminars or any of the business schools. It's how to, what are the words we need to use to make somebody want to do business with us? And some people have that magic. Right, you know, and it's interesting you bring up the concept of verbiage and, and what words that you select. It's, it is very important to select the right words in the right way, but correct me if I'm wrong, you kind of have a particular opinion about scripts and, and how you actually give a presentation. What's your thoughts on scripts and should salespeople use them? Scripts suck. <laughs> How so? <laughs> Answer the phone. Let's do a role play here. Hello. Hello, Mr. Duford. Um, I'm Dunford. Duford. 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 Oh, the difference. Sorry, Claude <laughs> Diamond here. I'm reaching out to you today about about life insurance. And if you just, if I could just have a moment of your time. I can tell you, show you all the benefits of the ABC Insurance Company, how to protect your family. What are you going to do? You're asleep already. You're bored. <laughs> You're going, oh, my God, another freaking salesman. Another one. Yeah. It's the fifth call today, you know? Okay. I have shot myself in the foot in the first five seconds. And this is what 99% of, I don't care, real estate insurance, network marketing. I don't care. What, I don't care if you sell dental floss. If you approach most people that way here, in 2000, going into 2018, my God, 
you are going, you're doomed to, you're doomed to get frustrated. You're doomed to get rejected. You're, get, you're going to get depressed. Sales can be very depressing to right. a lot of people because they're not going to the bank because they're using these boring, repetitive, redundant scripts. And, and the prospect knows, prospects are not stupid today. We're, so what are some of the things that you teach to overcome that, you know, understandable wall that people put up when they hear the same pitch, like what you've just said, that 99% of salespeople do. What do you teach to connect with the person on the other end of the line like that? Guts, uh, we call it guts for a reason, because we do things that sales is dangerous, David. <laughs> okay, sales Very is dangerous. dangerous. I've, I've been almost threatened for my life several times. Uh, sales is dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> it's, um, uh, it's, uh, it, it, it has to be creative. It has to be spontaneous. I'm a student of psychology, of different psychology movements, uh, transactional analysis. I love Robert Cialdini, uh, uh, the psychology of persuasion. And I've been influenced by a lot of different people. Why do pe And I ask myself one question every morning. Why should someone buy from me, listen to me, pay attention to me? How do I get into, a, into at least five good presentations or prospects or appointments a day. I gotta be different. I've gotta be creative. I've gotta be spontaneous. I've gotta do what we call pattern interrupts. Okay. So if I call you up on the phone and you say, and you say hello. Hello. David, Claude Diamond here. You got a problem. <laughs> Uh-oh, what's that, Claude? I got, I got a note here from Siri. Siri's my little uh, tenant. She said, you're, she said you, don't, you don't have enough protection for your family. And I can't believe a guy who loves his family, his three, wife and three children with a new baby on the way, is, 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 is going to leave their family in some kind of uh, destitute situation. God forbid you're hit by a meteor. Why is that, David? Um, I, I, wow. Uh, I'm kind of shocked here. How did you find my name, Claude? You know, I was on a bathroom wall in a Howard Johnson's restaurant. <laughs> no, no, serious. Again? Not again. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I got it. Um, you know, that's a good question. Why am I calling? Maybe you responded to my webpage or a mail. Yeah, that's or right. I, I was, you mentioned the baby. Uh, you know, I've oh, uh, put out like a request and put some information in for life insurance. Yeah, you're, you're kind oh, of yeah. Oh, good, good. And maybe, you know what? So when's the baby due? Uh, May 2018. Can I have your email? I want to send a little. Do you guys ever go to Babies R Us over there? You're in Texas? Tennessee, but yes, Tennessee, we do. Same thing. Um, Tennessee. Do they have Babies R Us in, t in Tennessee? Yeah, we got one. We got one. Um, can I send you a little gift card? Yeah, sure. Yeah, absolutely. For the baby. It'll be my little gift here. Pre uh, uh, is the baby coming before or after Christmas? Uh, after Christmas. After definitely. Christmas. Okay, well, let me send you a little something. You always need stuff for the baby, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Babies are, Can't babies, have are, babies are real expensive. Let me send you a little gift card. What's your email, by the way, David? It's uh, david123 at gmail.com. Okay. I'll send that to you also. David, I'd like to send you some information about myself, how you could protect your family. You're the breadwinner in your family, I assume? Yes, I am. That's right. Okay. Gabby, boom. See, it's not that hard. It's, it's not, not that It's hard. funny. It's really interesting because I can picture myself on a sales call and, and, you know, immediately, it's funny, it doesn't take minutes or hours to engage in a unique and fun way. And um, I, I could imagine people just open up in many ways much more easily and connect much better with this approach than the tried and stale approach that everybody, exactly. and everybody knows that doesn't get as good results as it used to. You have to be improvisational. I use humor a lot. I, um, the greatest philosopher, you know who was the greatest philosopher of our, of our time? Um, no. Who is it? Is it right here. It's on my mug. Popeye. Ah. Okay. Popeye was a, know. Popeye was a vegan and he dated an anorexic girlfriend named <laughs> Olive Oil and he had a baby called Sweet Pea or a nephew and everything. But Popeye said one thing all the time greatest philosopher of our time. What did Popeye say? I am what I am. What I am. I am what I am. Right. But Popeye embraced that you just have to be yourself. You don't have to be anyone else. You don't need a script. If you if you truly, you got to have passion for the product you're selling. You got to believe in it. And you got to know the advantages and the bullet points. So you don't want to use a script. 
you've got to get in the door because you're a stranger and people don't talk to strangers. They're very nice to their next door neighbor or somebody at work or someone from their church or synagogue, but a total stranger calling them up at dinner time is caca. So scripts don't work. So you have to right. be spontaneous and innovative and get a different way. And in guts, we have so many ways to open the door easily, friendly, fun in the beginning without right. being this, this robot salesperson that is so, we hate these people. And don't you hate that person? I hate to use the word H-E-T. Oh, yeah. Shut them right down. I don't care. Yeah, I right start down. hearing it. It's over, even if it's a good product offer. It's, it's the worst. And so we've got to do something different. So scripts are garbage. Uh, you know, and, we, uh, and, and if you want me to talk about presentations, is that one of your questions today? Yeah. So one of the things that I love about what you teach, so if I can, you know, go back in the Wayback Machine like six years ago. <laughs> Miss, uh, Mr. Peabody. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So and I'm Sherman. too young for that. I don't know what you're talking about there. That must be a. Mr. Sh Mr. Peabody and Sherman invented the Wayback Machine. I think I, I think I could visualize something my dad used to watch. You know, he's 60, I think, now. So okay. your age group, right, Claude? <laughs> Me? I'm, I'm perpetually 36. You're going backwards in age now. Yeah, my mom talks about that now, too. So. Hey, I'll, ra I'll, I'll race you in a marathon. Any, you want to go you out for a marathon? Do. Yeah, no, I, I, I submit. I would. <laughs> So yeah, one thing I love about your training, because when I first started in final expense, I had problems and I, I have had successes. I have had failures, much like most people in sales or business go through. And the one thing that always frustrated me about selling final expense insurance or anything else is I would spend all this time with a prospect. I use the quotes for reason, as you, as you know already, um, and find out that they weren't going to buy. And I'd waste all this time. And it, that was extremely frustrated. And I remember watching your training where you have the timer and where you spend on how to aggressively pre-qualify, but in such a manner that you know if your prospect is, is, is qualified or if they're an unqualified suspect. So I'd like you to kind of explain that a little bit to the audience, because I think this is something that everybody needs to spend time learning because it gives you back your time and it gives you back the joy and pleasure of selling, if you don't mind, Claude. I don't mind. No, I love doing this. This is fun. Thank you. Um, the highest paid profession in the world is what? It's sales. It's sales, baby. The most successful, the wealthiest, the happiest people I know are great communicators, persuaders, influencers, salespeople. And they do something better than everybody else. <laughs> and your typical sales guy, and the, the trouble is the training out there and some of the old-fashioned books and things like that. They're still saying, knock on a hundred doors. They're still saying, uh, ask for the order five or six times, which I find personally annoying. I don't, my people don't do yeah, that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I want to make them buy. I want to make them give it to me. Claude, this sounds great. Where do I sign? Do you take MasterCard? That's what I want to create. Such a level of uh, where you, where they want to make them buy. And they, they, besides reading scripts and begging for the order, they do the worst thing a salesperson can do. Give a presentation. <laughs> Everything now that may run a little counterintuitive. How uh, do you mean for these uh, these people thinking you're crazy? <laughs> well, the, the typical sales guy, insurance, real estate, anything. The first thing they do when they get a friendly, lonely old person on the phone is uh, they find. Oh my God! I finally got someone to listen to me, to talk to me. They're so right. desperate. And then what do they do? They go into presentation mode and they tell them all, they tell, can I use bad language or maybe I no, should? please. They tell them all the shit that they didn't want to hear. <laughs> okay. Right. They, they basically give them the history, if, history of life insurance or insur insurance that you sell or real estate that, and things like that. Giving a presentation up front is like a doctor doing surgery without doing an examination, without do, doing an MRI. It's like a lawyer going to court without knowing, interviewing his, his client. It's, it's ridiculous, it's a, waste. it's a waste of everybody's time. Millionaire salespeople, the highest income people that I know, don't give presentations. You know what they do? They speak to, the, they speak to their prospect and they ask questions, guts, is a question-based system. But we don't ask questions like a policeman cross-examining um, somebody, uh, somebody who they pulled over or a lawyer on a court case. They ask questions in such a way 
that the prospect wants to participate and the prospect ends up talking more than the salesperson. In actuality, this is the beauty of my gut sales method. The prospect becomes the salesperson. The prospect gives the presentation and asks the questions. The prospect gets emotionally involved. And the million dollar rule is people make immediate business decisions emotionally. And we capture that by the way we ask questions with stroking and nurturing and empathy. Now, when you go, and for example, David, when you go to your doctor, what does he or she say when you walk in the room? Says, hi, what's going wrong? How, what's going on? Why oh, are you here? Dr. Duford, my, my, um, um, my, my, uh, left, nos uh, my left, uh, left nostril hurts. <laughs> I can't sleep. I can't work. And uh, can you help me, doctor? Yeah, let me check it out. I'm going to grab this, uh, you know, 10-inch uh, microscope and stick it up there and see what's yeah. going on. Yeah. And here, off the role play, do you, do I as the patient mind my doctor asking these personal questions and poking and sticking me and putting me in a gown with the, with the back door open? And, I Absolutely mean, do I not. That? It's expected. That's their job. They're the professional. You're the client that's coming in for advice and recommendations, not the exactly. other. Exactly. I don't mind. You're not, say, you're not saying, hey, Claude, good thing you came. We're having left nostril surgeries. Uh, we're having a sale right now. Did you see our coupon in the paper? Uh, get on the operating table here. Let's go for You wouldn't go to a doctor like that or a lawyer. I'd run out the door if they started talking like that. You, they're suspect. They're not necessarily thinking about me. They're thinking about them. I, you know, there's, it just doesn't sound right, right? So why, David, this is the pivotal question, why on earth do we act like that in sales? I, I have no explanation. Otherwise, all I can think of is that sales managers don't know how to sell, maybe, that they make programs that don't sell. It doesn't make any sense. My, whole, my premise is if you get in front of people and you act like a clown, don't expect them to treat you with respect. Don't expect them to buy. People right. love to buy. We love spending money. We just, sometimes we got to watch our money and stuff or we got to balance our budget. But we, if we can make them emotional enough, and maybe we, you want to discuss that a little. Sure. People buy emotionally. and You're in, you're in, um, what, um, in the insurance business. Correct, you're right. What is, what's it called specifically? So we sell final expense life insurance. So we deal okay. with people that want to buy a plan to pay for their burial and cremation costs, correct? I, 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 love, insu I love the insurance, but in my next life, I want to own an insurance company. Do you know why, David? No, why is that? It's the most e one of the most emotional businesses there is. And when you have a, an, a business that is very emotional, when you're talking about insurance, you're talking about family, security, financial, love, life, death, children, legacy. You're talking about all these great emotional things. My God, if you can't sell that, if you just sell it in a different way, my God, you can make as much money as you want. If you believe in the product and you're getting a fair remuneration. Well, you know, it's funny too, because we, we sell a product that's very simple. It's not complicated. It's easily affordable. But if you compare this to the big packages, the estate programs, the big investment grade type policies it all comes back to emotion like you just said it is an act of love a lot of insurance sales trainers say look life insurance is about love it's an intangible product they'll never see and so it, in its essence and it's fundamental it's an emotional product and so you have to stoke the emotion the emotion has to be there you're so right absolutely it's it's really about and you know i hear from a lot of, of a lot of sales people oh there's so much competition and, and that's nonsense too. There's it's nonsense. Nothing, it, when you believe you're the best and when you convey that to your prospect, you don't have any competition. There is no competition. I'm a little guy who runs a multi-million dollar business. I work, it's myself and my wife. And I just, I, all I do is give good phone all day long. <laughs> I talk to wonderful people all over the world. It's the million dollar skill. I don't need a fancy brick and mortar office. I live in California, Colorado, North Carolina, and Hawaii. I, I, I am debt free. I am mortgage free. My kid's college is paid for. My health care is first class. I'm totally, I could have retired 10, 15 years ago if I wanted to. I won't because I love sales. Having too I'm, much fun. That's the way it should be. Too much fun. It's so... All I got to do is talk to wonderful people on the phone or on Zoom or Skype. I use a lot of video conferencing. 
because the eyes are the windows to the soul. You know, when you can, it's the phone is good, but video is so much better in sales. And there's no competition. And what I think we do with guts is we, we do things a lot different. We try to get that connection that I call it familiarity with somebody. And we do it in such a way by the question, you, and we have three steps in the gut sales method that we use. You know, we're going to need an hour, David. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's fine. I'm having fun. So, if you're, if you're ladies, up, we were talking about how long this interview was going to be in the beginning. I think it's going <laughs> to. Yeah, we're up to that thirty-minute mark, and we're just getting started. <laughs> but I think we need to. Um, we have to have a different system of sales. We have to learn how to ask questions the right way, and we have to be a storyteller. Right. Right. Do you know what I mean by storytelling? Why don't you go into that? Because I think that's just, especially in the life insurance business, that stories are what sell. I tell agents myself that the best, the best storyteller was Jesus Christ. Yeah. You know, the parables that he explained, the tenets of the gospel. It's, it's, and should, if there's anything to copy, it would be that. So why don't we, you all love, we all love stories, whether it's in the Bible or Netflix or whatever. We love stories. Stories we get in uh, stories usually have a, a, a moral or a rule or, or something that teaches us something in there. And sometimes the way, rather than give a presentation, by the way, we do give presentations when we get enough information. I have to gather enough information and then I can custom tailor my presentation at the close on the third step of the gut sales method. Right. Uh, but we have to, um, we basically have to be storytellers. So if I was selling insurance, and I've never sold insurance, by the way, and you were a prospect, and we go into this, I like role playing. That's one of the ways I teach sure. with my students, by the way. What we do is every week we get together and we do role playing. We do live calls or practice calls and we record them. And that to me is the key to get great in sales and get it to higher income is to practice a lot. Right, definitely. Like, by the way, and the way we, if you were a client, and we were storytelling and you had some objections or you were on a one through 10, maybe you were a six. I would say, David, doesn't sound like you're ready to make a decision about this and everything. I understand. Can I share one thing with you before I go? That'll be fine. What's that, Claude? I, I, this was a very moving experience I had. Um, a good friend of mine from the old neighborhood in New York City, uh, he passed away. I had to go to his funeral. His wife and three kids were there. And um, after the funeral, we went back to the house and we had something to eat and everything like the wake or whatever you call it. And I said, are you okay? Um, I, this might be rude. Are you okay financially? She said, no, we're, I'm really scared. I was going to talk to you about it, Claude. Um, we have nothing. We have a mortgage. The kids are in private school. I'm a stay at home mom. We have nothing. And I said, he didn't have any insurance. She said, no, we're, he was a young man and he passed away unexpectedly. I, you know, and I, and you're going to laugh at my, no, you probably won't laugh. You know what my immediate emotion was? No, what was it? Anger. I, I, I totally understand. I should have known better. Yeah. I was, I was mad at my best friend from the old neighborhood that he didn't love his wife and three kids enough to spend a little bit of money, one dinner out a week to protect him so his kids could go to school so his wife wouldn't have to move out of the house or lose her house in the embarrassment and, and, be, and, and force the whole family that had a stable upper middle class lifestyle now into dismal poverty, all for a small amount of money equal to, to one red lobster dinner a week or a month or something. And I was actually angry at him, I was mad at him. I don't wanna see that, you, you're a good man, you have a great family. David, you want me to lie to you or tell you the truth? I'd appreciate the truth, Claude. You need to get this. And I, 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 I've really enjoyed this conversation. And I, we need to make this happen. We need, tell me what, I, what you need from me in order so we could protect your family. So God forbid this never happens to your wife and kids. That's good, Claude. Man, no, and that's it, can, it comes off sincere. And, and you're sharing a story of, of love that, you know, that and consequences of that decision, but in a respectful manner. I mean, that's what I love about your training because it connects to the heart. There was a lot of things in that role play, by the way. Thank you. You were a very good process. That was storytelling. We tell a story that's true, or we tell a story that we read or a story that we heard. We, um, we never lie, but we remain creative and innovative and spontaneous. Stories are the way you reach people and you make it 
you, did you feel the emotion, even though we were, we were just role playing and having fun? Did you feel a little bit of this there for a moment? Absolutely. Be because we're talking about life and death and protection and love and, and, and all those good things. When you can do that in sales, that's the million dollar skill. It's a, and it's, some people are probably watching and saying, how do I do that? How do I learn this and everything? You've got to get a, you've got to get a, a, a system mm -hmm. that embrace, uh, that teaches sales for the, for the modern age. And you've got to practice it enough with somebody, a mentor, a teacher, the top salesperson. You've got to practice it all the time. So you become spontaneous. You can do it in a second's notice. It's automatic like dry getting into a car. So see we, see, we take sales for granted. We think, well, we'll just go out there, knock on doors. Well, we read the brochure, the training manual. That's all we need. No, this is a science and an art, David, a yeah. science of psychology. You have to know how people think, feel, react. You have to use your words like a master surgeon, but you also have to be an actor. And, that, and this is where people get a little confused, or I, I use the word thespian. You have, to, you have to act, not to be disingenuous or manipulative. You have to act in order to control the environment, to put it in the best um, algorithms. Like a, like a, do you ever go to a casino in yeah, Vegas? One, one time on a boat. Back okay. On a you know, that whole casino is designed for you to lose money, spend money, and everything else, right? Yeah, that's my yeah, wife you, found out. <laughs> yeah, you know, there's no clocks. There's a lot of free alcohol. Yeah. Uh, Okay, and that, that whole environment, and it's dark, that whole environment is conducing to you, conducive to you to spending money. That's what manipulative salespeople do. We're not manipulators, we're just creating a comfortable environment by acting in the proper way. So you have to be a great thespian, and you have to have knowledge of psychology, of human behavior. This is the key to making unlimited, you know what's my definition of success? What's your definition? I share this on every interview. Um, uh, you know, I've worked, uh, my wife and I have worked long and hard to have this stability, this comfort level. And if you took every, God forbid you took everything away from me, the houses, the cars, the money, the savings, everything. Strip me naked, basically. If you get me to a, you, God leaves me healthy and knowledgeable, and you get me to a phone. In 30 days or less, I will be a top income earner. I will be a one percenter. And that to me is, the, is that's what success is all about. The ability, the greatest people it, you've ever read. Bi I love biographies and stuff. If you ever read, they've all lost. They've all had tremendous step, setback in life. Exactly. That's exactly right. It's, it's amazing you know, how common thread that is. They've all been bankrupt or broke. Yeah. And they, but here's the thing. Why do they come? Why do so many come back? It's in them. They have the stuff. Uh, they have the stuff. You could take, see, it's not the materialism. It's not all the cars and things like that. That Anybody can lose that stuff. It's the ability to know that you could lose it all tomorrow and make it back again because you can give good phone. Because you can, you can, give, some, you can give some guts. Right, absolutely. And that, and that to me, that's why I always call it the million dollar skill. Right. Let me ask you a few questions here, uh, Claude. Oh, sure. kind of I'm sorry, I'm a little shy and reluctant today. Yeah, <laughs> doing great, man, doing great. So uh, let's see here, kind of hit up some of these. But yeah, here's a question for you. So as you know, I know too, the vast majority of sales, it doesn't matter if they're in real estate or insurance like me, the vast majority of salespeople fail. 90%. That probably is a little low in my expect in my experience. And we're all interested in becoming top producers. So my question for you as a mentor, as somebody who has trained salespeople from all walks of life, what does it take to be in that top 10% and to stay in that top 10% of producers? Uh, you've, you know, when someone doesn't have a job or they lost a job, what do they do? They look for sales. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. You don't have anything else to lose. <laughs> but to me, sales, I'm proud to be a salesperson. Absolutely, yeah. When my daughter was born and I was there and the umbilical cord was wrapped around her neck like a little tie, I said, oh, future salesperson. She ah. ready to have a tie on. You know, the thing about it is I'm very proud to be a salesperson. It's given my family a, a great lifestyle and comfort. And to go, you know, I've been broke in my life. I've been, I've been. I've had times in my life when at two in the morning, I'm staring at the ceiling saying, 
gee, how am I going to pay the rent? I mean, I know the stress of not having a, a, enough money in life. I've been there, and I never want to go back there, and I never want to go back there again. And the thing about it is, um, if you've got to treat sales like a profession. You've got to study it. You've got to learn a system. You've got to practice it. They fail because they don't take it seriously. I have a, I have a marketing plan where I know I have to speak to at least a five. I do a minimum of five appointments a day. And sometimes it's 10, 15, as much as 20 appointments. It's exhausting. You know, but I make a great living because I speak to really wonderful people and I know how to speak to them. People fail because they burn out and they don't know. They're just going out there and they're doing the same old tired dog and pony shows. They're asking for the order. They're giving pres boring presentations without qualifying. They're asking for the order a couple more times. The prospect says, I'll think about it. I'll talk to my spouse. Send me some information. Call me in two weeks after the holidays. Okay. The pro that's not the way to have fun. You got I'm the only sales trainer that uses a three-letter word called fun. I have so much fun in sales. We laugh, we talk, we share family stories. Do I sell everybody? Of course not. But I sell a hell of a lot of people if I can make it emotional enough for the product or service at the time I'm selling. Right. And people need to study this and learn this and practice this and take it seriously. Because you cannot take sales for granted. And here's the thing, David. Most of the gurus and the seminars and everything, they, they don't teach this stuff, no. which is just amazing. They, what they sell is a lot of motivation. Some information, a lot, 90% motivation and no, right. pers and, and no persuasion. I'll Infor no information, thing. motivation, no persuasion. And you, this is the million. I could know nothing about your industry. And I could guarantee you that I could make a sale in it and learn as I go. I'd rather, I'd rather know some stuff before I go. But I can go out there and I know how to ask questions. And, and you know, a lot of times people ask me questions. And when, the wonderful thing about the gut sales method is when they have a stall or an objection, where most, people, most sales guys fail because when they get these stalls or objections, they have no answer or they get very defensive all right. of a sudden. Give me a stall or an objection. Let's do another role play. Oh, Claude, you know, uh, my budget's pretty tight. Christmas is around the corner. I it just is. can't buy today. I just it, 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 I it is. think about it, Claude. You know what, David? You're not allowed to think about it. Not allowed? What do you mean, not allowed? You're, you're not allowed. That's a famous guts phrase, by the way. It's in my books. You're not allowed to, you're not allowed to think about it. And I'm saying this, David, because I think you're more worried about my feelings. Most people, when they say... Uh, when they say, I'll think about it, they really want to say no. And God bless you. It's okay to say no to me. I'm not here to pressure you or anything. I'm here to protect your family. But if you want to say no to me, it's done. I'm not going to bother you and call you and all that other stuff. But can I ask you one question? What's that, Clyde? You strike me. Is money really the problem here? Because I think you want to, you seem to me like a good man, a good husband, a wonderful father. You got a new baby on the way. Don't you want to protect him Christmas or not? What's more important? Something under the tree that'll break or you'll never use again, or something that'll protect your family for a lifetime and give your wife, uh, give your wife peace of mind and security and make sure your children go to medical school someday. Is it about the money? Because it, it, our company, we do charge for our policy. There is a little cost involved. You, I can't say you don't have a point. You, you really. Let me, let, right. me ask, let me ask you this before I go. If money wasn't an issue, would you want to buy this policy to protect your lovely wife and kids? Of course. Yeah. What? I'm sorry. Absolutely. I yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I came out hearing ache fell out again. What? <laughs> yes, of course. So if I could solve that problem, if I could offer some kind of financing that works with your budget, even with the holidays and everything, how would you feel about that? If we can make it fit the budget, yeah, sure. I'm sorry? Yeah, no, that would be great. I could, yeah, I'll buy. I'm willing to do that with you today, David. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Claude. <laughs> That's gut selling. It's, you take, it's science, it's behavior, it is all I, see, and I should, that was a pattern interrupt. You're not allowed to think about it. Absolutely pattern interrupt. I didn't see You've that. never heard it. Have no. you ever heard a salesperson say that? <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. But yeah. it wasn't disrespectful. It was, no. it was, it was the truth. It was it's great. Just, 
It's because the salesman comes first. You got to, yeah. I am what I am. That's all what I am. You've got to, you've got to have confidence. Confidence only comes from success, from a check, from uh, being um, so comfortable in your shoes that you could say the things that they never hear. And those are called pattern interrupts. Pattern interrupts, we also call them a guts move. It's kind of a shock, electrical shock to the system. Yeah. What did, wait, what did he say? I can't think. What do you mean I can't think about it? I'm not allowed to think of it. And then you fix it. In guts, we have a, the one thing I've always said, we can always fix it later. Mm -hmm. Okay. I had one a quick story. One of my, I, I work with some very large corporate clients. Okay. One of my corporate, real big in New York City, um, the flagship store and the head of sales called me up. He said, Claude, I was on the phone today with a CEO and he hung up on me. What do I, what do I do when they hang up on you? I said, well, you wait a little time. You ask yourself why they hung up on you and then you call them back. And we practiced and we role played. And he called the guy back and he said this. He said, Mr. Prospect, I, it's been bothering me all day. I'm sorry to bother you again. I had to call you back. Not many people hang up on me like that. And I, whatever I did wrong, please tell me and I'll apologize. I just wanted to make things right between us. Guess what the guy did? Guess what the guy said? What did he say? He said, I'm sorry. It was my bad behavior. I shouldn't have hung up on you. It's been oh, wow. bothering me all day. Really? Come on in. Let's have an appointment. That resulted in my client, by the way, getting the biggest sale in the history of his company that year. Wow. He called Incredible. up someone back who hung up on him. Now, how can you do that unless you have an unbelievable high degree of confidence? That's right. How do you do that? You've got to have a system. You've got to, and you've got to understand how people think and feel. Guts is almost like training people to be mind readers. You know, you've got to know and think ahead of time. It's like chess. You better know two, three moves ahead. It, it, you know, uh, you got to think, well, if I do this, where he's going to move here and I'll move there and he'll move here. And you've got to think ahead. Why should they buy from me? Why do they need? And then you've got to go down the bullet points of exactly uh, what are the, we call it the EQ, the emotional quotients. Right. What are the things that will make them want to say yes today? rather than just giving them, uh, you know, features and benefits and all that stuff. Why don't you ask them questions that you know relate to what they need in your product right? or service? That's, it's really it. Claude, I got a question for you. I think uh, I haven't heard this yet, but I'd love to have your perspective. Of course, if uh, you pay attention to the news at any length, the uh, specter of automation uh, is one of those uh, – things that are talked about a lot in the news, the automation of manufacturing, the automation of retail, and the automation of sales. My question for you is, how do you think this is going to impact our business and what can salespeople do to maintain their level of success and uh, still uh, have a great career in sales? When you say automation, you mean robot calls and bots and, and things like that? Yeah, like one of the articles I was reading was talking about how um, they, the idea of getting rid of the used car salesman, how many people would love to do that, that yeah. they wouldn't have to deal with that type of stuff. And so obviously sales is just like any other job on the rocks, potentially to be replaced by robots and, and, and non-professional salespeople or not, not people, non-people. <laughs> I'm not saying that at some time in the future – um, artificial intelligence will be so sophisticated that it might uh, uh, eliminate or take away a lot of sales jobs. It probably is doing that to, to a certain extent now. Amazon Prime is a good example of that. You go online, you can order things, you don't have to interact with people. And, you know, it's, it's really, it's seamless. I love Amazon Prime, something like that. But I think there's always going to be a place for a person to person, human to human, contact and connection. People love people, uh, especially people who can answer their questions, who they feel comfortable with, who they trust. Likeability and trust are one of the psychological triggers of sales. You can't get that from Siri, unfortunately. Right. Okay? She's one, I, hope, I'm, I was glad she didn't turn on. I have a lot of SIRI <laughs> devices around here. Right. And I, love, and I love Siri and uh, Alexis and all that other stuff. But I think there's always going to be a place, no matter how society and technology changes, there will always be a place for a great communicator, for someone to change all the algorithm. Uh, without getting political, I'm going to get political. How did Donald Trump become president? 
uh, he uh, he connected. He's a he's a salesman. He's the consummate salesperson. He he's a salesman. He used Twitter. He said outrageous things. He hit. He picked one or two topics that are so highly charged and emotional uh, on it and everything. And I'm uh, and you've got you can't take oh Bernie Madoff. Okay, the, the you know he stole sixty. He's in jail right now. I think he's in Colorado. Ma matter of fact, in the in the federal Around country. The <laughs> Stole $60 billion over 20 years. You know, when they interviewed the people after he was arrested and they said, why did you give this man? Some people gave millions of dollars. And I think two weeks before he was arrested, somebody gave him a hundred million dollars. Wow. Okay. A company. And they interviewed these people and I've seen every movie. I've read every book on him, this guy, because I was fascinated how for 20 years he could get people to just give him money. You know what? You know, what was the most common answer? What, what did they say? Uh, People hard say, to believe what they would do. Why would they do that? He, yeah, exactly. I mean, there was no really very little accountability or anything. It was some phony paperwork, but and all that. He just gave him the money and he gave him the returns. It was a Ponzi scheme. But the number one answer was, I like him. Right. Likeability and trust are the keys to persuasion. There are other things, scarcity, uh, social proof, um, uh, things like I have it on my wall here. Uh, all the different consistency authority figures. People like people who are authority figures. Right, that's right. Who um, shock them with the, well, Mr. Prospect, you want me to tell you the truth or lie to you? I think you're the truth, and they always say the truth. I mean, I can lie to you and give you a sales pitch and everything, but it's not. The truth is you're making a mistake. Waiting until after Christmas to buy this policy for your family, it's a mistake. Because I can tell you many stories where people were thinking of doing this and then something happened. You need to protect your boom. You go into it. Right. Um, you know, so these are, these are the things that are, that are so important in sales. Uh, all these things that we're talking about so fast today. Um, did I answer your question? <laughs> yeah, no, I, I totally agree with you. I just lo loved your explanation. People are people, as you say. Yeah. And uh, they will continue to need uh, advice and counsel from authorities and, and expert figures yeah. and, and more reason to de well develop yourself and your skills in sales because yeah. the robots are after your job and uh, it better be good. And it's, and the, they never will replace the person. Uh, they will in certain industries. I think uh, like the car industry where we can go online now and build a car. Yeah. It's already happened price. really, you know? It's yeah. Happened online a lot of the times yeah and then when you go to the dealership you know your price you can get a consumer reports and you, you know things like that. you can go there informed more than anything right rather than going people want to be informed today they love the technology they love the internet because they can get all this information and but they still need a salesperson that they want to ask questions what size engine uh, what kind of upholstery and things like that and that salesman might persuade them into certain additions and things like that that might be to their benefit or not Right. depending on how they see. I think there's always going to be a proof. I think we'll always need someone who can communicate information in such a way that that person feels so good about that other individual that they say, yes, they sign the contract, they hand over the credit card. Right. There'll always be a place for that. Right. I totally agree. And, and no matter how it, it is, everything's always changed, but there's always been, even in the old wagon train days, Levi Strauss, got in his little wagon train and sold pots and pans. And then he found the miners and he, they needed really good work jeans and pants. Boom, a business was born. Right. You know, Absolutely. It, it was, he was a great sales person though. Well, Claude, as we wrap this up, if you don't mind giving us your uh, uh, contact information, where can we find you on YouTube, on the internet? And uh, if somebody's interested in working with you, how can they reach out to you? You have the most intelligent audience in the world, don't you, David? Of course I do. They're I'm glad you didn't say no. <laughs> Mental all, level. All your, all your clients have to do is Google Claude Diamond, and they'll find me on, I have 680 videos on YouTube. I have ClaudeDiamond.com, my webpage. I'm on, uh, I got a lot of stuff on Facebook and Twitter. Just type in Claude Diamond and your intelligent audience. Can I give a gift away to your audience, by the way? Is that all right? Absolutely. Feel free to. Anybody who sends me, uh, goes to my webpage, ClaudeDiamond.com. There's a little but, uh, thing there to, and uh, you get a free book. That's all you go to ClaudeDiamond.com. Um, just, you'll see free book on the gut sales method. You don't have to buy anything. 
which is kind of a, we could talk about that. I have found David, by the way, in terms of marketing, I can get more quality prospects by giving away more information than most other people sell and by then giving another gift afterwards and stop being a stranger to people. Guts, right. Guts is also a marketing program and I know we don't have time to talk about it. Do you know I, I get all my leads for zero cost through social media? It's inc I know and I was gonna, I was gonna point out to everybody watching this is if you wanna spend some quality time learning sales, Claude's got awesome videos on YouTube. I mean, they're hilarious and educational infotainment. So make sure you check out that. And that's obviously just like me and my business. That's where I get a lot of agents who find out about the business and start working with me too. This is amazing. Yeah. This has been great. And uh, oh my God, we went over our hour that we or half hour. We were going to do this. Right? Definitely, yeah. It was quite fast. I'm glad it was, uh, it was a uh, super fun. And, and as always, it's, it's a pleasure to, it's a pleasure to interact. It's uh, you're great to talk to too. It is. And I tell everybody just give good phone and it takes, yeah. It takes guts to rule the world. Thank you, David. All right, Claude. Hey, thanks for your time. You take, take care. care.